台北电影节的观众们，大家好，欢迎收看这一次国际新导演竞赛入选影片之一《人鱼记》的线上 Q&A 影片。那呃，我们今天非常高兴邀请到《人鱼记》的导演沙哈德阿敏在线上。我们先请导演跟大家打声招呼。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2020 Taipei Film Festival. We're really happy to have this online Q and A session with the director of Scales. Now, please welcome Shahad Amin, the director of Scales. Would you like to say hi to the audience? Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for watching the film. <laughs> 大家好，非常谢谢大家一起来看这部电影。好，那呃，我相信大家看完这部影片之后，应该都对这个具有魔幻写实以及女性气质的影片非有非常多的疑问。那今天我们准备了一些问题要来跟导演做交流。I believe that after watching this film, the audience is very curious of this feminine and magical reality film. So we have a lot of questions to interact with the director. 好，好，那呃，想要请问导演的第一个问题是，《人鱼记》的这个故事的基调其实非常有某一种黑暗童话或是传说的色彩，是不是？先请导演跟我们分享一下，在什么样的机机缘下来创作这个故事。My first question is that the tone of the film scales is、um, actually pretty dark. It has a mythical and legendary kind of tone. So,、uh, why did you want to base your feature on such a story? Okay, so、um, that's a very good question, and thank you for asking it. But one of the big things for me when I wanted to make my first feature is that I wanted to make something very personal. And I know it's rare for me to say that I'm、uh, that I'm in mythical world and magical reality world, and I'm saying it's personal. But I'm saying what's personal about it, what's dark about it, is the experience of being a woman in that world. So that was the most personal thing that attached me to this project. Sorry, does she need to translate? Yes, of course. Thank you. This question is very good, and I'm very grateful to you for asking this question. First, when I was thinking about making the first short film, I wanted to make something that was related to my own personal experience. Of course, I'm not saying that I live in a fantasy world or a legend world. But I wanted to make something that was related to my own personal experience. But I wanted to make something that was related to my own personal experience. But I wanted to make something that was related to my own personal experience. But I wanted to make something that was related to my own personal experience. But I wanted to make something that was related to my own personal experience. Can I continue? Here. Yes. So、um, I had a short film before that was based around the same world. So I've been I've been living in that story world for about the last seven or eight years of my life,、um, and I came to it from a very subconscious level. It didn't just you know I never thought that I'd be a person to write a story about mermaids. I was always interested in more dramas, more political dramas. But for me to attach my story to this mythical creature and in a way symbolizes the journey of being a woman in Saudi Arabia, the journey of being an unaccepted girl,、uh, a form of a second-class citizen. That's what really drew me to that world, and、uh, um, and also it was a very visual world for me that I get to experience. I I didn't have to. To, uh, tell my story through dialogue, necessary, but through symbolism and imagery. 嗯，好，那我其实之前呢，就根据同样的故事结构做了一支短片，所以你可以说我在这个同样的世界里面生活了七到八年的时间。那对我来讲呢，其实我是非常潜意识的想要去表达这件事情。那我刚开始并没有想过我会以人鱼这种传说中的生物为主题，我一直都觉得自己会拍比较戏剧类型的，或者是政治剧风格的。但是人鱼它这一种传说里面的动物呢，其实它表现的是一趟旅程。那它在这个过程当中。就可以让大家可以看到阿拉伯世界里面的女性是如何被当做一种次等公民来对待，而且呢，这个过程当中我们用了非常多的画面去呈现我自己的这些体验，不需要太多的对话，我们用很多的象征、很多的图示来呈现这个感觉。OK， 呃，那在根据一些资料，其实有了解到故事的灵感有一部分是源自一个女神的传说阿塔阿塔加蒂斯。那呃，根据这个传说，导演在怎么样的过程里面把传说融入自己的经验，来变成我们现在看到这个电影的故事呢？ According to my story, I understand that some of your inspiration comes from the goddess Atargatis, and I would like to know how you blended the legend and myth. With your personal experience and create this story. 
It, it was very funny because I answered a bit of the question where it came from a very subconscious place. Um, as I was writing this this short film, the idea came as uh, this magical idea that I get to experience very visual elements with. But when I was making my short film, I had to work with a lot of mentors who were asking me really serious questions. Where is this film coming from? And where is the where are the bases, the heart of the story? And for me, when I when I when I started writing writing and diving deep into the story more and more I discover when you discover the ending of the film when you discover the big five scenes of the film you discover what it's truly uh, internally about and when I discovered that I was like it was a shock to me it was a shock to me where I was like this is a great symbolism of, of women who live and girls who are very much, you know, rebels in a sense, but they live in a culture that refuses to accept them. And I thought a mermaid is a great symbolism for that. And I was actually shocked that it was, that it wasn't, it was never used before that, you know, in my short film, I chopped a mermaid in half and everyone was shocked by that realization. But I really felt that this is what happens to us metaphorically in, in, in sometimes places that they do not appreciate women as much. 嗯哼，呃，其实呢，我刚刚已经稍微有提到一点了，就是我之所以会有这些灵感，都是非常潜意识的在运作。那我之前呢，就已经拍了一部短片，那那时候就想要用这种很魔幻的视觉来呈现我们的感受。不过，在我拍短片的时候，我就要面对很多前辈问了很多很严肃的问题，比如说，你这个故事的基础在哪里？你的核心到底是什么？所以，当我在写。这个长片的剧本，而且更深入的，呃，潜到这个世界里面去探究的时候呢，当我写到最后一幕大结局的时候，我突然觉得啊、哦，我一切都懂了，这个永恒的道理我终于体会到了，就醍醐灌顶。然后对我来讲，我非常的惊讶，但是我也很深刻的感受到，原来这个象征一直都存在，女生就像泡泡一样，一瞬间就消失了。而且在这个世界里面，大家都拒绝去承认女性的存在。那人鱼就是这么样。一个清楚、好用又又大家都很熟悉的象征，我也很压抑。竟然在我之前从来都没有人用过。那我之前拍的短片呢，是他把这条人鱼切成两半。那那个时候大家一看到都非常非常惊讶，可是又瞬间可以恍然大悟哦，这个就是女性在我们的世界里面没有被重视的一种象征。嗯哼。那接下来也想要聊一下跟拍片过程比较详细相关的一些部分哦，就是这个影片在拍摄的地方，故事的设定是一个被死海包围的岛。那也只有人类这种生物在岛上，导演怎么样找到一个非常特别的这个景来做拍摄呢、mm-hmm. ？And my next question is more related to the filming process. We know that in the story,、um, the story is based on an island surrounded by the Dead Sea and is only inhabited by human. So I want to know、um, how you got this idea and how you find the place.、Um, so. The idea came from the 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 story itself.、Uh, we wanted.、Uh, I didn't want anyone in the film to be an antagonist. I know films normally have antagonists, but I refused that idea. I wanted everyone in that world to be pushed to the very limit,、um, so they're just victims of circumstance. And so even the men in that film were victims of circumstances. And in order for us, for me to do so, I had to take everything away from them in that world. So I had to take the animal aspect, the plants. So it's even there's no greenery, you know, there's nothing except the rocks that represent the the men. In this village, you know the, the the people who are holding on to traditions and the water that represents the women, the changing elements in that in that village, you know the the hope for the future in a way. And、uh, as for the location,、um, we actually search a lot of location. And at one point, we were going to shoot in Jordan, so it was by the Dead Sea, so it was a very salty environment. But the problem with Jordan was it didn't have a lot of fishing communities near the water of the Dead Sea because it's not a you know fishing <laughs> type of sea.、Mm-hmm. So we found a location in Oman, in Oman,、um, where it was. It's by the stretch of Hormuz, so it has a lot of、uh, mixed color. Cultures from Persian to Indian to Arabic. They even don't speak Arabic. They have a different language called Kumzari. 
So that was one of the most exciting places we can shoot in. And uh, it's it's timeless uh, landscape um, made me decide that it is the place to shoot in. And just, you know, how raw the people in that village were. And it was just tremendous to shoot in a place that is that does not have the infrastructure of filming. But we allowed, um, we, we actually shot there and the community really helped us there. And a lot of the people that you see in the film, the extras, most of them are from that community from that fishing community. Mm-hmm. 好，那其实这个构想呢，就来自故事本身。那呃，其实很多的故事里面呢，都会有英雄角色。可是我想要呈现的是，每个人在这个状况里面都是受害者。那所以包括男人也是，所以男人也是被这个传统所欺压，或者是他们也很有无力感。这至于是为什么呢？我把他们能够用的东西全部都拿掉了，嗯、所以在他们的岛上没有动物，也没有植物，所以你看到完全看不到绿色的东西，那只有石头，石头就代表男性，然后也代表着他们所呃尊重的这个传统。那海浪呢？海水代表是女性，代表是变化，代表是对未来的一些希望。那我们会找到这个地方，过程也很有趣。因为我本来想要在约旦拍，因为约旦旁边就是死海，嗯、那死海又很咸，但问题是呢，呃，那边并没。有渔夫，因为本身死海，它就没有渔业，所以我们就没有办法在那边找到呃正确的一群人。那后来呢，我们找到这个地方是 o m a n 它其实它不管它的地点，还有它那个岛上面的人群，他们确实是渔夫，很符合我们的这个拍摄的设定之外呢，这群人他们的文化背景也非常的多元，他们混合了波斯、阿拉伯跟印度文化，他们自己讲一个很特别的语言叫做 c o n s a t i c 那还有就是他们的地。景看起来是没看不出时代的，嗯，那呃，里这边的人呢也都非常的淳朴，所以第一个可以很适合我们拍的部分就是他没有什么基础建设，所以你看不太出来这是哪一个时代的故事。那再来就是当地的社群，他们也都对我们很帮忙，我们其实拍了很多当地人进去。嗯哼，那刚刚 sorry for the long answers, no problems, no problem。呃，那刚刚也有提到一个。部分的隐喻，我觉得非常有意思哦。就是这个关于海，其实是隐喻了女性跟海，呃，还有希望跟变化。那其实这部影片也有非常多在海上或者在船上的戏，是不是可以请导演跟我们分享一下，在海上跟船上拍摄是否有遇到任何的困难？以及如果对导演来说，海代表的是女性的话，在船上的戏是否有更更多的弦外之音呢？You talked about that force, and you said that the water represents women and changes and the hope of the future. And we know that there are many scenes on the sea or on the boat. So I would like to know, first of all,、um, was there any challenges filming on a boat or on the sea? And secondly, is there any metaphor、um, concerning the boat scenes? Um, so basically, yes, <laughs> there are a lot of challenges on shooting it near the water in general because what people don't pay attention to is that near the water actors get wet, and every time they get wet, you need to reset, and every time the boat and、um, and that makes shooting in water takes triple the time on shooting on land. I was sometimes very oblivious to that. I was like, no, no, no it's going to take us three hours max, and then it ends up taking us six hours just because of all the resetting. That we have to do, whether it's for the boats or for the actors. So definitely, shooting on water is something that I'll try to stay away from <laughs> for for the next projects. I I think I'm done with with shooting around water.、Um, as for、uh, what was sorry, what was the, the second question? The metaphors. If water means changes and the hope for the future, then what does the boat mean? But maybe we can do the translation first for the first question, and then you can think about the second question. Yeah, <laughs> 没有错，有非常非常多的挑战。其实光是在水岸拍摄就有非常非常多的困难了。大家都没有想到，就演员会湿。所以呢，每次就是演员呃演员湿掉了，道具湿掉了，我们很多东西都要重来。所以经常在拍水岸的戏的时候呢，时间是你在拍陆地戏的三倍。有的时候我就自己也很白目，也忘记这件事情，我都会跟剧组讲说三个小时就可以拍完了，然后。结果要花到六七个小时，那就是因为我们要花很多时间去重新设定呃船，还有道具，还有演员，所以以后这种水的戏我不拍了。And for the second question, so um, 
Uh, so there are secret kind of things that, because everything in that world, when we built it, we try to make it mean something uh, for the main character and the hero's journey, who, who is Hayat. And her her name, Hayat, in Arabic, it, it means life, which I can get to it later. But um, in the boat, if you can see there, every time they jump in the water, they hold on to these pipes that are pumping air. And we actually made it in the... We don't focus on it, but when we were talking about it, we made it in the look of the umbilical cord that we see when baby Hayat sees that the little brother being born. So it actually looks exactly the same. So for us, the boat was all, was always their only lifeline. And it was attaching them to those water, to the mermaids inside of them, to the power of, of women inside of them. But that's like the small details that we put here and there. <laughs> 也有很多的意义，比如说他们每一次跳到水里面的时候，手上都会拿着一个管子。这个管子呢，就是给他们空气用的。那虽然我们并没有特写这些管子，不过我们在做的时候呢，就是希望把他们做成像脐带一样。所
，学校根本也不了解，他拍什么电影？这边就有什么电影好看？那干嘛要花这么多时间去拍电影？那所以呢，他因为要来拍电影，还被挡掉。不过后来幸好就是补修了。但对我来讲，这是一场噩梦。如果没有办法找到他的话，因为他根本就是我们这部电影的面貌，他代表了我们的灵魂，然后他也代表了所有女生的这个人生经验。他很厉害的一点是，他可以把他对这个世界的愤怒。诠释在这个镜头前面，我觉得他演的真的非常好。那大家要理解一件事情，就是在沙特阿拉伯呢，我们是没有演员的学校的，没有戏剧学校的。那而且呢，整个沙特阿拉伯的文化是大家尽量不在不抛头露面，更何况是在镜头面前要展现他的这些情绪。其实这个在我们文化里面是不被允许的，所以有他这样子的一个天赋，然后可以运用在我们电影里面，我们觉得非常的幸运。像他在镜头前面，他可以很真诚的哭出来。或者是他可以很真实的表现他的愤怒，这些都是很难得的。那他诠释的不只是沙乌地阿拉伯里面的小女孩被边缘化的这个体验，它其实代表的是全世界还有很多国家、很多社会文化里面的女孩，她们其实都没有受到重视，没有受到在乎。那他把这些情绪通通都放在荧幕上了。嗯哼，呃，回应到导演一开始跟大家分享的这个故事，其实是一个很私密情感的揭露。那提到这个角色，是不是也请导演跟我们分享一下，是否有任何自己的经验转化在这个角色的设定里面？那是什么样的经验跟？呃，情绪感受呢？ Mm-hmm. In response to what you said at the very beginning of our interview, you said that it's a very intimate expression of emotions and it's personal to you. So we would like to know if you blended any of your personal experience into this film, and how did you transfer from your personal experience to the story? For I mean, one of the reasons I wanted this film to be my my first feature film. Um, even when people told me, "Don't shoot near water for your first feature," or "Don't use babies for your first feature," or "Don't don't use bees, don't use mermaids,、uh, don't use fantasy," you're not going to be able to control all these elements for for a first time, you know, first n- big narrative. I felt that this is a film that represents me and my story and my journey, and it deserved to take. I deserve, it, and I had to take a chance on it. Um, I, I like. I feel like like Hayat felt when,、uh, you know, every girl. I, maybe I'm not gonna say every girl, but most girls who, such as myself, I was a bit of a tomboy. I don't agree with that term, but <laughs> this is what I can use. But that's what they teach you. It's anything that is, you know, then you don't feel like a girl because you're a tomboy. But who defines what a tomboy is? You know, it's a society that defines it. Or there are things that girls are supposed to like and girls are not supposed to supposed to dislike. It's it's something that we've agreed upon as a society, but it's really prejudiced against people who don't feel the same way.、Um, so for me,、um, when my body started changing as a woman, and that's something that Hayat go through when she can she cannot control that body. It's changing to a mermaid's body. We all go through it when when your own body is rebelling against you. Suddenly, it's a body that that you shouldn't feel ashamed of that. You should. It's just a child's body. It becomes the body that people consider shameful.、Uh, you know that people consider will bring shame upon a family. It becomes something that is forbidden. And the truth of the and you cannot accept a body that is forbidden. They tell you your body is wrong. Like they told Hayat, she's supposed to be in the water. In our society, your body is wrong. <clears throat> as soon as you become a woman, you have to hide it. You know. It's it's it it's, it tempts society. So for me, that was the journey really of Hayat is becoming a woman, accept accepting accepting the body, accepting that it's not shameful, accepting that it's actually powerful, and they don't understand it, and she has the power to do so. And that's what happens throughout the, the film. She keeps refusing the body. She kills the body that looks like her. She thinks it's wrong because that's the only way she knows how to feel. And unfortunately, that's the only way. Like it, it took a, it took me、uh, and some of my friends a lot of years to unlearn what they taught us about our body. Oh, okay, well, that was nothing. That was you get through it. But when you're a child, it's not nothing. It stays with you until you learn to get through it. And that's that's the journey of of、um, that's the most important journey in the film. That journey of her understanding her body and its power, and that it's not.、Uh, Um, it deserves to exist. 
Sorry, 好，就是我第一次要拍长片的时候呢，虽然有非常多的前辈给了我很多的建议说，说你如果第一次拍长片也没经验的时候，不要拍水岸的景，然后不要用到小 baby， 不要拍人鱼，不要用奇幻的元素。他说你没有办法在第一次拍长片的时候就控制这么多元素了。可是对我来讲呢，这部长片代表我，代表我的故事，还有我的旅程，所以我觉得我必须要冒险一搏。那对我来讲呢，其实我觉得嗨呀就是在演我，我觉得可能每一个人都有这样子的经验，或者不一定每个人，但是很多人，大多数的人都有这样子的经验。你是小女孩的时候呢，你有可能很想要做一些小男生做的事情，但是你可能很早就被人家讲说这样是男人婆，或者是这样就是小男孩的个性，所以你就会被别人教导说啊，你这样不够女生，你这样不够女孩子气，然后你。女女生要喜欢什么，不喜欢什么，这个也是社会约定成俗的。那如果你没有那么喜欢，大家觉得女生要喜欢的东西，好像就有一种偏见投射在你的身上。那海雅她经历的呢，就是她身体不断的变化，没有办法受到控制。她不希望变成人鱼，可是她身体就是慢慢的变了，她的身体背叛了她。那在这个过程里面，其实跟我们很像，我们本来都是小女孩，然后渐渐的你开始长出了女人的样子的时候，大家跟你讲说这样很丢脸，这是被禁止的。所以我们的。文化里面呢，不让我们去接受我们的身体，他让我们觉得我们的身体是错的。他觉得说，你一旦出现了女人的这些呃身体的变化的时候，你就应该把它藏起来，你不能让它表现出来。所以，其实这个电影讲的就是我自己的历程，我自己变成一个成年女性的这个过程，我如何的去接受我的身体的变化，并且去理解到我的身体一点都不可耻，而且呢，其实我的身体是非常非常有力量的。那像海雅，她本来是很拒绝变成一条人鱼，她甚至。觉得当他杀了其他的人鱼，他就有得到力量。这种感觉就是我们小时候也会被教，就是说你要怎么样表示你很坚强的，你就去做那些让你可以跟别人同化的事情。当你变得跟别人越来越像的时候，好像你就得到了一种归属感，然后从中间得到了一种力量。那那个似乎是他当时唯一能做事情，可是渐渐的，我们就要逐渐的去学习怎么样忘掉别人教导我们的这些事情，然后去回想，其实我们一刚开始的时候，我们就有自己的设定，然后我们有自己的性格，所以对我来讲，这是一个非常非常重要的过程，就是逐渐去理解你的身体以及你的权利。谢谢导演非常慷慨激昂的分享，其实我听了就是也颇受感动。呃，最后一个问题也是一个跟导演自身经验比较相关的问题，想要请教导演自己，身为一个女性导演，在阿拉伯的电影工业制作环境里面，或许不是工业啦，在阿拉伯的电影制作环境里面，你的经验跟观察是什么呢？嗯 It's very touching. I I I appreciate your answers. And my last question. Is concerned with your personal experience too. So, as a female director, how do you observe the filming environment in your country, in Saudi Arabia? Um, I've never experienced、um, any kind of prejudices from people in the film industry or people who work on sets.、Um, on the contrary. They give you complete respect because they understand the hard work that co- that go- comes with making a film or making a commercial. They are in it, so they can't, you know. They actually all they have for you is respect because you're in it. Of course, prejudices comes from people who don't know, who don't know what this work is really about, and it's truly about that. You face a lot of prejudices, and you face more than your male counterpart because your male counterpart is still.、Uh, A human in their eyes, you know, you're not complete human. You know, I face、uh, issues because I don't cover. I face, I face the smallest issue. They don't look at your art anymore. It becomes you become only a woman in their eyes. So we have that issue that we have to resolve. That people don't seem to acknowledge that a filmmaker is a filmmaker, regard, regardless of their gender. So I think sometimes,、uh, given that I'm a woman, that's the only thing that they see. 啊，其实呢，我自己在电影这个产业里面从来没有遭受过任何的偏见或者是歧视，因为大家都是圈内人，所以他们非常的尊重我们，因为他知道我们要投入多少的辛苦。那反不管是拍电影或是拍广告都一样，那反而呢，就是呃不在这个圈子里面的人，他们的偏见和歧视是一直都存在的。那他们碰到男性导演的时候会把他当人看，但是碰到女性导演的时候不会把他当人看。那你给他作品也也是一样，就是你的作品在。
好，在他眼中你也不是一个完整的人。所以呢，呃，在这个部分，我还我觉得我们还是需要很多的推广和教育，让大家知道，就是导演就是导演，跟性别没有关系。嗯哼。呃，真的非常感谢导演今天呃抽出时间来跟我们进行这个线上访谈。呃，那最后想要呼吁各位观众，不管是你是看过的影片的，还是没有看过影片的，接下来在台北电影节期间，分别在七月二号。跟七月七号都还有人鱼季的场次，希望大家可以把握这次的影展，来到戏院观赏这部非常优秀的作品。最后，导演有没有想要来跟呃观众做个结尾呢？ Thank you very much for sparing the time to take this interview. We want everyone to know that there are more screenings of skills on the second and the seventh of July. And at the very end of the interview, is there any message that you want to deliver to the Taiwanese audience? Um, thank you so much for the lovely interview, and thank you so much for the beautiful translation. I know I spoke too much.、Um, mm. I really hope that you enjoy the film. I really hope that people can、um, see what it's really about and get the honest journey of Hayat. Because I do believe that it's uh, uh, the story of Hayat happens is universal and happens everywhere on the planet. So I hope people get to see that, and、uh, I hope they get to enjoy the film and the festival. 嗯、非常谢谢你的访谈，很精彩。那我也知道刚刚有些故事可能答案讲得太长了，谢谢大家的包含。那我希望大家都很享受这部电影，大家也可以从这个电影里面看到哈雅他很真诚的这趟旅程。我相信哈雅的体验呢，在全世界，在这个星球上面任何地方都有。我希望大家可以看得到这一点。嗯、好，那就非常谢谢各位观众的收看，呃，也谢谢导演沙的阿敏，明展期间见喽。Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you so much for having me. Ciao, ciao. Bye.